<laughs> I actually do a little bit of conditioning. And dare, dare I say, dare <laughs> I say that if you bring 80% of the CrossFitters into the, the, the turf area for a heavy prowler session, I'm going to hang with 80% of them. I went toe-to-toe with McGoldrick on a couple of prowler slash heavy medleys. I, not all the prowlers are created equal. So we, some of us value conditioning and work capacity. Were you, of that opi- were, were you of that opinion five years ago? Don't lump us together. No, actually, I wasn't. You know, a funny story, Mike Stone, who we referenced earlier in this, this podcast, told me a story of lifters he used to train with who, like, the, before a competition, wouldn't take stairs, certainly, wouldn't walk across the street to restaurants because they didn't want to burn any calories, basically, that weren't going to be spent on the platform. Right. The attitude is, and I had the attitude, like, don't – Walk across the street. Don't go for a relaxing walk out in the park. Don't climb stairs when the elevator is an option. Never do anything that's going to detract from the heavy squat workout that, that sucks. afternoon. Yeah, I mean, it sounds all good when you're when you're ignorant enough to pursue some goal blindly. But the order you get, especially when you realize you can be actually really, really good shape and still be really, really strong. Probably stronger than you would have been if you just sat on your ass. I, just, I think, just lifting weights. I think there's something to be said to be for... Um, work uh, training for work capacity. You can train yeah. more if your work capacity is high. If all you do is heavy singles or triples, and you don't and you cut all the conditioning, your work you, you're not going to be able to train as hard. So or you got to be in shape. Of, to, or you got to be in shape doing, to train, right? Doing sets of ten and stuff if you're powerlifter. Well, right. Powerlifters hate boy. Powerlifters hate it. When I was powerlifting, and then when I was doing CrossFit or interval training. My body, my figure was better when I was doing uh, powerlifting. Like, um, my muscle mass was greater. My fat was, my fat amount was less. And so even though I wasn't doing the same amount of cardio, my, my body structure was much better. Take that, Bledsoe. <laughs> no, I, I'm just I, Everything I, you just said is bullshit. I like what she's saying. I, my, I know, my, best, my best body composition was in, in weightlifting during... Uh, when I was just lifting, and I was scared just to cut out my cardio because I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna get fat. And I'm any, gonna get big." But I didn't. Anytime I took on like still, I mean, hot type training, I got totally hot. <laughs> well, it mostly matters. It mostly comes hey, down. so that's all that matters, right? You're eating good when you're doing that power thing. Yeah, I was eating. As well, Doug, Doug, mm-hmm. Doug, Doug oh, is the okay. expert here. Doug, is it more important how you train or is it more important how you eat? Question. I'm still hung up on Lisa talking about being totally hot. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it? Which came first, the diet or the barbell? I have to say, my, I don't eat really awesome just because I I'm I can't. I'm an emotional eater. <laughs> oh my God. Otherwise known as female. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if I want something yummy, I will eat it. But, I mean, I eat good for the most part. So what's yummy? I don't know. Like, if I want a cheeseburger, I'm going to eat one because I want one. And I don't want to get a freaking well, eating have, disorder by depriving myself all yeah, the time. I, I have the attitude. I, mean, <laughs> I see least, girls making that argument. That. Why are you eating that cheeseburger? I don't want to have an eating disorder. <laughs> <laughs> no, but mentally, for women, I think more so than men, we deprive so much. And then we have a bad day and we're like, dang, you know. And then we just eat everything and the wheels in sight. Fall off. Yes. Right. So and it's then, good. And then the depression us, sets in. Yeah? Men are, not, are very different. They're car- they can compartmentalize their feelings and they just eat what they need to eat. I mean, you can put something in a Ziploc bag and eat it all week long. If it's there, you'll eat it. But for us, we're like, oh, I, I find I've that had to such be a bad yeah, day. I just, I just like really want a cheeseburger. I find that to be true. I can have like a bottle of wine on my, my kitchen uh, counter and I won't touch it all week, but it'll be gone by the end of the week. If Ashley's there. Because oh. oh, Ashley oh. will drink it. Amen. Yeah, I was very confused for a second. I won't touch it all week, but it'll oh, be gone. It's the hey, mice. I got to <laughs> head out. Peace out, everybody. Okay. Th- thanks for having me. It was great. Yeah. All right, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa Bye, Lisa. She's going to go find some chocolate. <laughs> chocolate at McDonald's. That's where she's going. Let's put James on the mic. Oh, do we, do we want to... Yeah. Do we want to finish with a topic? Maybe perhaps what's more important, diet or training? Can you out... Like Jim Jim Windler of Five Three One Fame, just I think I, I didn't read all the posts, but he made a post saying something to the effect of you can out train your diet. That he, he said you can out train your diet. Yeah, who who really cares what you eat? He's he openly will mock a little bit the whole idea of uh, a paleo diet or really being too much of a diet Nazi. Paying, you know, if you're training hard, if you're pushing a prowler super hard, and you're eating somewhat reasonably. Who cares what you eat? He's referring to performance who, or who is health this now? and longevity. Who said this? Or, his, focus or is, his focus is going to be or what? general 
not being a fat, you know, Jim's got to be a hardcore. So it's not being a fat ass. Jim, Jim Windler a is a, uh, he's a strength coach and power lifter out of elite fitness under dead uh, okay. tape. Formerly okay, okay. of elite fitness. Okay. Now he, 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 he has his, his own, own thing. Yeah. yeah. But I, his I, attitude I, is that, you know, if I want to be strong, not, not for power thing, but just strong, I can do the big three lifts. No problem. I do a couple of cleans. I have, my body composition under control, and I'm fit. I can push a prowler heavy 10 well, times, well, and I'll be tired. So I totally it, agree. It, it depends. Do you want to be strong, or do you want to be Do you want to be your best? You know, he, he would, if, I, if you're I, trying to be healthy also, he's not, I, I, I don't think, think you have to eat well. If you want to just be strong, him. then you can, eat, you can eat shitty food and get a ton of calories and, and be strong. Quick, quick antidote, real quick. Uh, three years ago, I decided to try the paleo thing. I had been eating zone-ish. I mean... I pretty much ate a, a pretty even amount of carbs, fats, and protein since I was 15. Um, I'm 30 now. And three years ago, three years, and I always tried to op, like get a lot of protein. <laughs> I am old. But three years ago, I switched to, I tried to, this paleo thing out. So I cut out all the, the carbs for. You were the very first one to try it, weren't you? I, I, was, I actually was the first. Besides, besides Grok. L- Lauren Cordain. Is that beard a paleo beard? <laughs> oh, Grocky. Absolutely. Um, so. I went a month without um, a lot of grains and stuff like that, and I didn't I didn't eat dairy anyway. I actually lost weight and got stronger in one month. I know my back squat went up, I think about twenty pounds. It wasn't it wasn't one of these things where like oh I got a five pound jump in my squat, mm-hmm. whatever. I lost weight, I looked more muscular, and I and I lifted more weight. And I, looking back on it, two things was one I was probably getting fewer carbohydrates. And then two, uh, I, I think that the I probably reduced my inflammation just by reducing the amount of grains I was eating and carbohydrates, and Were I you probably big, was able to recover and train harder, higher intensities, and stuff like that. Were you a big like oatmeal guy in the morning or something? Yeah, I was actually. I was too for quite a while. Then. Yeah, I would eat I would eat oatmeal and eggs every morning. Actually, we made Doug and I made a, a video where we we're like, hey, we're shopping for our food. Actually, I need to take that video down. I think it's still up somewhere. Like. <laughs> This is what my grocery cart looks like when I come back from Sam's. Like, you're not going to catch me buying food from Sam's anymore. Oh, so, the, are oh, there any Otter Pops in the cart? You can buy some things. You can buy, pops. I love Otter pops. pops. You can buy some. You don't know what an Otter Pop no. is? Ice no. cream sandwiches. I was all about there, Otter there Pops when I was like can, six. You can buy plenty of good food at Sam's. Um, some uh, decent all, produce. Honestly, the only food I get from Sam's now would be the uh, mixed berries, blueberry, you know, all the berries, frozen, frozen berries. berries, organic frozen berries. That's the only thing I really get from them because if, if I buy it from anywhere else, it's going to be, you get, good, you get good deals. And on. I, don't, I don't, I honestly don't think that whole foods is selling me any higher quality blueberries than no. what Costco is. And you can get, they're good, probably getting them from Costco. You get good deals on fish oil, good deals on, you know, crates of coconut water. They sell coconut water. They're right. All right. So cocoa almonds, so all that kind on, of the, on the fish oil and Costco. So I've always been a big fan <laughs> of, Telling people to get the fish oil at Costco. Um, even Rob Wolf has talked about getting fish oil. Just Kirkland regular, bland, reg, brand is pretty That's dope. what he says is Kirkland. But uh, actually, in the last week, it's been really strange. I've actually been hit with about um, from three different companies telling me, hey, our stuff is better than the average fish oil. And then also I've had a, one of our members, Chris, um, a different Chris, he was asking me about if I heard about this other brand. I'm not going to mention any brands now because I think we're actually looking at pr- promoting one of the brands or selling one of the brands in our facility. So I don't want to like jump the gun on that. But uh, wait for the plug. The plug's coming. <laughs> the ne- next episode, you'll get the plug. So um, I-, I don't want to jump the gun on that. But uh, is it red krill oil? I know that. I know that. I emailed Doug since knowing that he's the fish oil omega three expert. That he is, and ask him if there's any anything about this stuff that makes it more special than the Kirkland brand. And we and just note that Doug and I have been taking and prescribing Kirkland brand fish oil for like four years. I'm not really sure what the big difference is to some of these other companies that have contacted us lately. It seems that basically, from from what I can tell, it's us just making a leap of faith that they're telling us the truth, and there's really no other way to verify that they're any more pure or they're any more um, less oxidized when, when we get a hold of the product or that, um, or that they have any lesser amount of any heavy metals or mercury or anything like that. I really don't know how we're going to check those things. I, I know that one company specifically, they, they said that, you know, 
if you take our oil and you set it out for a month and then you t check it for oxidation, it'll it'll have less than the other leading brands or whatever. Um, you know what that, that confuses me is the Kirkland brand does come in that clear plastic case. Is that does that affect? You know what? The, when they I always think about that the, every time long, I buy it. For the longest time, they were selling it in like white plastic bottles, and then for some reason they switched to the clear. And immediately I go, "This is not. This isn't right." I mean, the, the nature this, of value, this, the this nature goes, away or whatever is is the dark. And you're taught in, in chemistry class and, and nutrition class that this shit will oxidize. Fat will oxidize. Right. That's why vitamin D. Tablets and all that it's shit. It's one of those comes. things where so, like sunlight hits it and it can it can oxidize. Yeah. yeah. They're kind of expanding on that point for the people that don't know much about oxidation in general. Uh, we talked earlier about how these type of fats have a lot of double bonds. And that's what makes them unsaturated. And fish oil out of all fats has more degrees of unsaturation than almost any other type of polyunsaturated fat. So um, EPA is five times unsaturated and DHA is six times unsaturated. So um, compared to... Um, and omega-6, which might be like two times unsaturated, or omega-9s, which in a lot of cases are only one time unsaturated. They're monounsaturated fats one time. Uh, and then saturated fats have no degrees of unsaturation. So fish oil specifically is much more likely to be oxidized or to oxidize, excuse me, uh, than some other fats. So heat, light, and air, oxygen, tend to oxidize things. Oh and I'm just so, going to go ahead and ask the question. A clear bottle. Oxidation is bad. <laughs> thank you james time. that's just, that's that's just that is the, that well, you know the biggest assumption of knowledge in the room well, I, I i assume people knew that yeah you're actually right oxidation is not good it changes the oils and you two, you lose those healthy properties two weeks ago i was gotcha. on a, I was on a <laughs> short thank you. road trip with somebody and they were like we were talking about we we're just talking about inflammation and i was talking about oxidation and i went on for like five minutes talking using the word uh oxidation and then he looks at me and goes so what's oxidation? <laughs> and so like I'm like, oh man, like even if I tell him what it is now, he's gonna miss all that stuff I was just talking about. Uh, that was like the example I used the other day. Of, I was telling someone who needs to desperately gain weight in it uh, as quick of, or short of amount of time as possible because he has to go up and play college ball. He was <laughs> he was wanting to you know put on like 30 pounds in the off season, and uh, he, he's well on his way, but he wanted steroids. to you need steroids, kid. <laughs> he's he's Take put on a good amount of weight yeah. and. Uh, I was telling him that you know maybe you should have a little bit more uh, in your post workout drinks or your peri workout drinks. So um, I said, you know, why don't you take this Gatorade and this protein and and on and on and on. And he goes, well, I need I need more carbohydrates. He goes, I thought I needed more calories. And I said, carbohydrates are calories. And he goes, Whoa. oh, I'm sorry, I just don't know very much about nutrition. Oh, my mind. And so the whole time, the whole time, he thought he needed calories and he didn't think carbohydrates. Work had calories. calories he didn't even know right you know he, he's a teenager he didn't know like and see, i was i was assuming that he at least had that handled and he and he didn't like when you see snack well cookies low carb low calorie low sugar <laughs> oh i'm a football player i can't eat that <laughs> low <laughs> low everything so doug you were talking about oxidation and oil and fish oil being highly oxidationable Sure. And, well, that's one of the reasons that fish oil... That was making up words. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you you mispronunciated a word. <laughs> you misunderestimated it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Chris was saying that they come in the, the clear bottles. Yeah. And you're obviously, if it's clear as opposed to uh, being, you know, like uh, a white or... I take or it some the brown type of is like, more expensive for the bottle. It makes the price of the fish oil go up. Brown? I guess brown is more expensive than clear. That's why it's clear. Probably not as marketable. What? That could be true. Well, Mark people want to see the pills in the bottle. I they said see what right. they're getting. I, I, I bet said you that... marketable. Marketable. That was good. Marketizable. Marketable. I don't know. I don't know about this because they're the cheapest ones. <laughs> are they? I thought they were the the, the Kirkland. But you know, right? you're right. The most expensive ones there are the Kirkland's the nature the whatever that are in the brown bottle. And it's more expensive. You go, oh, brown bottle. I guess brown bottle's fancy. I, 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 I wouldn't associate brown with fancy. I don't, I don't, I don't associate cheap clear plastic with fancy. All right, so when I go to buy my fish oil, they just saw that shit in the in in, pla in <laughs> orange plastic prescription bottles. There's your Ooh. fucking, there's your fucking meal ticket. There, you know, there's that, your get rich scheme. That's where people keep their good weed. Just like vitamin, just like <laughs> just like look, just just like vitamin water. Vitamin they're, water they're, took they're off because they made weed. vitamin <laughs> water took off and became. Don't oxidize until you burn it. <laughs> vitamin water took off because. It's, it's sugar water colors. with vitamins in it, but it, the, they made the label look like a prescription label. 
So you think, uh, oh, yeah. sports supplement, fancy thing. Subconsciously, when you look at the Vitamore thing, I, read, I saw a whole article about how they thought food, how to design, how to make it look like uh, a medicine, not medicine. just a drink. So, so actually, I'm having, I'm having a little bit of an idea here. Whoop. So, oh, <laughs> shit. So I got an idea. You're going to give away your great idea? <sighs> so, Doug. I know, that, I know that you and <laughs> On I a live have, podcast. You and I have pretty consistent diets, and we can we can keep it in one. Yep. Why don't we switch from Kirkland's brand um, fish oil to one of these these brands that claim they have uh, higher quality fish oil? We keep everything the same. We'll do like a two weeks of each, and then we'll do uh, <laughs> blood draws. How much does it cost to get blood drawn and to measure inflammation? What are, we, what are we measuring when we measure inflammation in blood? C reactive protein. Sample yeah, size of two. This will be very definitive. Go on. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't like relying just on some research. I like looking at well, you can't my rely body on how you and, feel because you you will Well, I, I like the idea of using my body just for case study after case study. I do like the idea of using data, but using data gets expensive. Yeah. So going how I feel is all I got right now. Because I can't afford <laughs> feelings are cheap. <laughs> Especially my kids, a lot of very cheap feelings. Yeah. <laughs> You've never seen me in Vegas. It's really, really cheap. I'm all about using my body for research and for other things. <laughs> cheap feelings. Yeah, I guess it'd be a start. It's better than nothing. It's better than just saying how you feel. Like, oh, I, things seem to be less inflamed. I have less joint pain. Yeah. Uh, yeah get a marker. It's the only thing you need. It's, it's there, hard. There are good studies that show that fish oil reduces joint pain. Yeah. No, I mean, I've had people say that when they come off of fish oil, their joints start aching. Hey, Actually, uh, whenever they do studies on rheumatoid arth- arthritis and people that take um, anti-inflammatory meds and fish oil versus people that just take meds, the people that take the, the meds and the fish oil always do better. Yeah. Always. And they're all, hey, they're uh, off of their have, meds Have we talked sooner. about uh, dosages at all of, uh, of fish oil? How oh, much fish oil shit. we should be taking? This is a whole other thing. I, I th- because, I'll tell you what. I'll use I that. think we should save that for a whole other podcast. Ooh, that could be because... Is it possible? Well, let me just ask the question: Is it possible to overdose right. on fish oil? Uh, overdose on fish oil? Like, yeah. has anyone ever act physically OD'd on like fish oil? Like, if I take the whole bottle, besides having fishy <laughs> breath, is there anything bad going to happen to me? Besides, you 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 will um, probably have vicious diarrhea. The right? The only negative thing I've ever really heard about <laughs> you probably shit yourself really bad. I can just. <laughs> Like like when the Lestra came out for potato chips, people were shitting themselves. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> a Lestra, for those of you that don't know what it is, it, it basically it basically blocks the absorption of fat in your digestive tract, and so Which all the fat that you eat you, you're probably goes gonna... right through you, and then it comes out nice and squeaky. Ew. Yeah, so there's probably no way squeaky. you could absorb. Have you ever seen oil sheen in your sure. toilet? <laughs> no. What are One. you eating, buddy? Eat those chips, man. Oil sheen or oh, yeah. or. I would say, or you can do what I've done and eat so much sushi in one I, night that you have an oil sheen. I in take your quite a bit. That's I mean, what take, happened to me one time. I take oh. three. I take three of those Kirkland's in the morning and two at lunch and two at night. I don't know if that's. It seems to be about twice as potent as what I was taking. Like the same amount of EPA DHA was in one of these pills as was in two of the more expensive. I think. Right. Like when I looked, it's better quality. Right. So I went from taking like six. Pills three times a day are taking basically like three or two. So, so what we're gonna do? I don't know if that's enough. what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of research. And when I say we, I mean Doug. <laughs> he, he's gonna look into the different fish oil companies. We're gonna see if there's a way we can uh, see if they're, what their claims are, are true or not. And then we're gonna see. Uh, we're, we'll tell you which is the best brand to buy. And I'm gonna that? do my own and research. Then he'll, and then he'll tell you. He'll tell you. Take uh, a whole bottle and report. I'm gonna go to home. Us. I'm gonna take the whole bottle and see and what happens. I'll report back. See, yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> see what happens. Use your camera and, and, and record. Well, what I, I think, I'll, I'll take a photo of the so uh, results, bro. I think when we look at quality, I think that'll be a good time to talk about quantity as well, dosages. So. The, the only adverse effect that I know of is that I know some females I've seen who take a lot bruise easy I, i've never seen that myself or anybody oh yeah when i started taking it um i, I would <laughs> my believe. girlfriend she bruised so much easier after she started like <laughs> official <laughs> oh, oh, I, that was a joke Doug. he's not laughing he's looking around confused <laughs> i have no idea what she just said <laughs> <laughs> i was not listening was to like, you at all he's thinking about fish oil thinking bruising. about something else he was thinking about actual things Important and things. my girlfriend, that's a different person than my wife. Okay, just so you know. <laughs> I don't want to hit my wife. Yeah. 
I have I have heard the bruising thing before. I'm not I'm not sure what that's all about. Again, it could just be, hey, I started taking a lot of fish oil. I'm also training harder than I've ever trained. I I see some more bruises. Could it be the fish oil? Is it just a? I've also heard a joint correlation and causation observation. I've heard a joint swelling, but I think I've heard that's actually really rare. But we know a guy that's happened to. So the only major thing I've ever heard with regard to fish oil is that um, it can change the amount of. natural killer cell activity you have, which is a component of your immune system. And so if you have to get an organ transplant, it can reject the tissue. Oh, that's interesting. That's like a really extreme case, though. (laughs) Other than that, most people should be supplementing with fish oil. Of course. It's a little bit of a blood thinner, so if you're going to have surgery, (laughs) they tell you not to take it. How many many of those people... If you have an organ transplant, there's probably other things... Yeah, there's probably other things you have to worry about if you're getting an organ transplant. Yeah, it's it's the least of your concerns. How many are you take? Well, away? I don't know. You, you do uh, want to accept that I'm organ, so maybe it's not the least of your concerns. Oh, the Kirkland? Yeah. What's Kirkland, double dose. Wait, how, 12 how, to 15 to the double dose. Oh, okay. yeah. Really? Is that what you advise? You recommend that much? I, 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 I recommend about that. What if you were a 300-pound power? How many would you take? Uh, 30% more than what I'm taking. Jesus. A lot, that, that is a lot Isn't of fish it, oil. Uh, so my, my nine pills a day or my seven pills a day does not seem like a lot now. It's a, a one gram for every 10 pounds of body weight. It's supposed to be right? one gram of omega-3s, which is different than the total, total amount of, yeah, right, of right. fat in the, in the pill or oil. Um, it's one, I think one gram of what I'm taking gives me like three a day, three grams or four, three to five, maybe maybe five. Well, I'll tell you this. It's supposed to be one gram of omega-3s per every 20 pounds of body weight. That's like the Rob Wolf uh, fish oil calculator. It, that's, that's a what lot. Suggest. It's a lot, right? Um, it is quite a bit, but okay. if you're eating, uh, if you're not eating any grains and you're eating grass fed beef, wild caught fish, if you're eating really healthy and clean, you don't need as much fish oil. That's a good recommendation for somebody yeah. who's on the typical Western diet. Um, I'm in between, I'm in between Western and straight as an arrow. I don't eat and, and any grains, but I'm not always getting my high thing quality is, is meat. I'm probably, there's no way I'm getting that one to one ratio Doug was talking about earlier. So I'm not afraid of taking in too many omega threes, so I just I just go you know. I'm going home. I'm drinking. I'm I'm eating 17 of them before I go to bed. See what happens. <laughs> I'll wake Chris up. isn't gonna wake up tomorrow. But I tell you what. I tell you what. I do still suffer with. I don't have bad joint pain, but uh, I do struggle with getting under a bar some days. My right arm gives me trouble. My right elbow gives me trouble. Uh, I have no lower body or spinal pain. Maybe you should pain, just do more but, mobility. No, it's 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 tendonitis and stuff. It's not necessarily mobility. My my, I have an injured elbow that is constricted with bone maybe, mass. Maybe you need to buy a, a uh, mobility kit. <laughs> for sale. Maybe for so. Sale where could much? I where could I get such a kit? That's a, I don't even know. Is there a website? The mobilitykits dot com. Oh, there you go. Get after it. If you go there now, it might just be a GoDaddy link. So go maybe. Now and enter the code name so Bledsoe. I used to take a lot. I used to enter take the code name Bledsoe. You can get ten percent off your mobility kit right now. <laughs> well, I, I used to take a lot of the cheaper ones. I take less of the more expensive. Well, maybe now it's time to up the expensive ones and see what effect there is. I, I find uh, as I grow older that uh, <clears throat> quality matters quite a bit, and I spend more on anything that I value. And uh, recently, I've been looking at. Better proteins, better fish oils, better supplements in general. So uh, I know that I've personally been on the search for this, and I will pass on information as I find it. Anyways, uh, we are going to sign off. So I'm Mike Bledsoe here with uh, James Chaney, who yeah. he said something here and there. Chris Moore. Twice. Goodbye, audience. And Doug Larson. We love you.